In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to get started using Google Classroom. This is a Google Apps bar. Click that and then select the Classroom logo. That'll take you to the website classroom.google.com. Click the plus sign at the top to create a class. If you don't have the option to create a class, that's okay. Talk to your Google admin. They have to give you permissions to do that. Click on Create Class. And here we're going to give it a title. Um, you can put in a section, a subject, and a room number, but those are optional. And then click on Create. All right, let's have a look at the parts of your class. Here at the top, you're going to see your class code. This is the code that students need to use to enter your class. Um, you can also invite them. If you click on this icon to the right, that expands the class code. Along the top, we have the stream. The stream is similar to a Facebook or a Twitter stream. You can make announcements there, um, and the assignments that you post will be visible here as well. And this is more or less just a big overview. The Classwork tab allows you to create and organize assignments. The People tab shows you which teachers are part of your uh, classroom. Uh, often people will add special education teachers, so if you guys are doing co-teaching, if you have a student teacher, you can add them. Um, or if you're working together as part of a grade level, you can add uh, your other co-teachers as well. And students, as they become part of your class, uh, show up here in the bottom. Before we dive into these tabs too much, we're going to go over the settings. To view your settings, click on the gears icon in the upper right hand corner. That opens up your class settings. Here you have your class name, description, section, room, and subjects. You can change those if you need to. Under general, you're going to see your class code. If you hit that drop down box, you can, uh, you can reset it if you needed to. Um, that might be handy if you have a class code that has some ambiguous characters such as an O or a 1 or an L. If you have any uh, odd characters like that that are easily confused with other letters and numbers, then go ahead and just reset it and that'll just give you a different code. Uh, from here you have the stream options. Uh, if you have children or students in your classroom that are a little more immature, then you can set the stream settings to only allow teachers to post and then during the year try to ease up the restrictions. Uh, but you may want to restrict that a little bit in the beginning, depending on your maturity level. Uh, classwork on the stream. If you want to include notifications of classwork in the stream, usually you want the condensed notifications. That's just a reminder that something new hit the, uh, hit the classroom. To enable that, you click on Generate Meet Link. And that creates a, a classroom link within your Google Classroom. That shows up on the stream page, also shows up on the classwork page, and allows students to very quickly, from their um, from their side, uh, join a, an online meeting with you. Very very handy for distance learning. Uh, if you want to have that available, you have to create this link and then make it visible for students. On to grading. Grading, I was just using if you're able to make this match whatever your SIS system is. So if you're using Skyward, you want to try to make this match what you have in Skyward. Um, if you don't, then it might be confusing to the students. It'll also be uh, double work for you because uh, depending on what your SIS is, it probably doesn't interact with Google Classroom to bring in your grading. So if you end up having grading here and grading in your SIS system, you just want to be careful that you don't have conflicting information uh, because you want to be consistent with your students. Let's look at how to add a student to the classroom. You can use the class code to show them this and allow them to add themselves to your class. Or you can come over to the People tab, click on Students, and then click on Invite Student. From here, you can type in the name of the student. You can click on the name of the student and then uh, click Invite. Once you invite the student, it'll say that they are invited but not quite in your class. After they've accepted the invite, then they're officially in your class. Next, let's have a look at the stream. You can click on share something with your class to give an announcement. You can select which classes to, to include and which students to include. You could select particular students if you wanted to just send the announcement to them. With this, you can also add attachments to your announcement. You can add a Google Drive file, a link to an external website, a file you upload, or even a YouTube video. Here, I'm gonna include a syllabus. So under my drive, I have a Google document that has the syllabus for the class. And then from here, I can click post. I can also schedule it or save it as a draft. In this case, I'm just going to post it. And there the announcement shows up on the stream for this classroom. On the classwork tab, 
you see all of the uh, topics and assignments uh, that you have created within your classroom. How you organize these is something that's going to be up to you. You want to try to find some sort of organization scheme that keeps you sane. Uh, typically, you can organize all of your files and assignments into topics, and the topics you create are going to be to your taste. So people will often just have assignments and materials, just two really big groups. Some people will want to sort it by week, sort it by unit, or some people will want to be more specific and sort it by subject or topic. For this example, I'm just going to create uh, assignments and materials. So here I'm going to click Create. I'm going to click Topic. I'm going to call it Assignments and click Add. Then I'm going to create another one, another topic, and call it Materials. And then click Add. Now here you can drag and drop where you want them. So I can drag assignments and put them above materials or materials above assignments. I'm going to have materials over assignments. And that's going to be the topics I'm going to use for this demo classroom. Next, I'm going to add some materials. So I click on create. I'm going to click on material. I'm going to give it a title. Give it a description. I'm going to click add, click Google Drive, locate my file and attach. On the right hand side, I can select which classes to go to, which students to uh, to select it for, and then select the topic. And here I'm just going to put it under materials and then click post. I'm also going to add some other materials just so I can have a few extra here. In this example, I'm going to include a link. Add link and then include the URL to a, to a website that I want students to have. Click add. Again, give it a topic, and then click Post. I can also, if I wanted to, upload files. So here I'm going to include a reference PDF file. Click on Add, click File. From here, I'm going to upload it. So I found my PDF file, select Open, and upload the file. Again, give it a topic. I'll place them all in the materials. So now I'm starting to organize and curate materials for students. Now that we've posted materials, let's post an assignment. Click Create Assignment. From here, you can give it a title. I can add a document from my Google Drive. If I click on the title of the document, I can open it real quick. In this case, I have the essay prompt with room for them to place their essay. This is a good way for me to make sure everybody is working out the same document. I can select which class to send it to, which students to include, how many points. Uh, I can give it a due date, so I'll put it a couple weeks out in advance. I can give it a time as well if I want it done by a very specific time, and I can give it a topic. So in this example, I'm just going to put it under assignments, but again, you want to have whatever organization style uh, suits you. Then from here, I can click on assign. An important thing to look at here is this drop down here. With the attachment you have, you have three options here. For the first option, students can only see the file. So if you have instructions for them, that's great, but they will not be able to edit the file. If they're going to submit something to you, for example, an essay, they're going to have to create their own and upload it to you. Uh, if you have the second option selected, edit file, that allows everybody that this is assigned to to edit the same file. That's great if you have everybody wanting to collaborate on a single document, but usually you want everybody to create their own. Uh, for that, I suggest using the third option, which is make a copy for each student. So this essay uh, template that I've created by using make a copy for each student, will fork the document and split it so everybody gets their own copy of that document. Once you have all of your settings the way you want them, click on Assign. And then the assignment shows up here under the Assignments section. Classroom allows you to monitor students' progress as they're working on your assignments. So I can click on this simple essay, click on View Assignment, and that brings me to this screen where I can see all of the activity that's happening with this project. I can see that I've assigned it to one student so far, zero have turned it in. And I can see that student's copy of this document. Because if you remember, we created a copy of this essay template for everybody. So from here, I can click on this document, see the work they've been doing as they do it. And if they're editing, if they are editing this document right now in real time, I can see the changes that they're doing and interact with them with comments and such. So for example, I can highlight text, 
give it a comment. And then the students will be able to see that and respond to those comments. And then they can reply as well. In this view, I'm logged in as the student and I can see all of the materials that were posted as well as the assignments that are due. A real quick way to see what I should be working on right now is to click this view your work link here. And this shows for the student any assignments they have that are due. Um, they can also see any assignments that they turned in and see the results of your uh, of your grading. From here, I can click on the essay. I can click on view details, and that shows me the status of it. I can see my work, which is the document. Click on this. This will open the Google document. I can see the template that the teacher has provided for me. I can also see any comments that they've uh, given for this. Here I can uh, complete the assignment. This essay was totally not copied off the internet. Once the student has completed the assignment, they can click turn in and then turn in again. Uh, that will submit the assignment to the teacher for them to review. Now, if I made a mistake and submitted it too early, the student can click unsubmit in order to um, unlock it and allow them to make changes to it. A lot of times students will click on the document and view that it is view only, and then they'll try to click on request edit access. Um, that's not the way for them to do it. What they can do is from the assignment screen, they can click unsubmit, click unsubmit again. That'll pull it back out of the teacher's inbox and let them uh, edit the uh, assignment or maybe add more files if they wanted to. And then once they're happy with it, then click turn in again. Now we're back in the teacher view and I can see the student turned in the document. From here, I can click on the file to view it. I can see what they entered. I can see any comments that they've added. I can see the private comments. I can also give them a private comment and response. Again, this will only be between me and the students. Yeah, once I give it a grade, I can click on return with that grade. After I have returned and graded the assignment, I can see that the student's essay shows up under the graded uh, category. So from here, I can click on this and see the history of it. So uh, the private comments, I can add more comments. So if the questions, if the student has a question, I can respond to it from here. I can also change a grade if I need. Now, if I return to the classroom and then go to the grades tab, from here, I have a lot of access to, uh, to certain things. I click on the student record and see all of the assignments that they've turned in. I can click on the grade and change the grade from here if I needed to. I can click on the triple dots here. I'll return it to them again because I just changed it. And I can also view the submission. I can also, from the top here, have a look at what I submitted to people um, for the assignment. So I can click on this and, and view the assignment as a whole. So back on the student view of the classwork tab, I can click on view my work, view your work. And from here, I can see the simple essay was returned with the grade. I click on this to view more. I can see the private comments. I can also click on the view details and it will show me what I submitted, um, any public comments as well as private comments and allow me to, to view the document that I submitted. So that's the, the view of a returned assignment uh, after it's been graded from the student perspective. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this tutorial gives you all the tools you need to get started using Google Classroom. If you have any questions, let me know how I can help. Thanks.